Hello, this is Jason Sisko. Welcome back to our series, Overcoming the Spirit of Jezebel. So far, we have been defining her. We have been giving tools to identify her methods. And finally, we have been giving some specific instructions about how to uh, practically get off the web, get out of her control, have peace in ourselves, and then speak faith, speak the anointing of God, and let the Holy Ghost begin to deal with it instead of trying to respond emotionally. In this lesson, lesson six, we are talking about Jezebel's demise or bringing Jezebel down. Not just overcoming her in ourselves, but bringing her down. When, when do we stop just uh, finding ways to get around her or to keep from being manipul by, manipulated by her? And when do we get into that point where she loses her influence and loses her power, whether it's in our family or whether it's in our churches or whether it's in our nations? How can we bring this spirit down? This is the ultimate question that everyone asks. After they start taking this in a little bit and they get the profile and they start saying, oh yeah, I know somebody like that. I know somebody like that. I know somebody like that. We can have the profile, for instance, of an organist who is known for their talent and their musical ability, and they have friends in the choir and people in the church that just love them. But when it gets right down to it, they refuse to submit to the pastor. They refuse to flow with the purpose of God, and they undermine them. I've seen churches where they would try to control the church through the music, manipulating the motions, and when the pastor would try to do things one direction, they would go another direction. I saw one church where the pastor actually said, you know what, we're not even going to have any music because it's much simpler for me to try to pastor this church without it than to have somebody that's good and talented but will not lend themselves to a right attitude and a right spirit. You say, well, how do you deal with it? Is, it? is this the only way you can just sever everything and then the church gets upset, you have no music? I mean, it's, it, 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 it's someone that's embedded into that high place. Uh, one particular place I was at, the pastor's wife was just filled with the spirit of Jezebel. She had literally told her husband, if you do not obey me, I will turn our children against you. I will make you a laughing stock. I will leave you and I will cause all the brethren to lose faith in your ministry because, because you did not do what I told you to do. It's just things like this that you say, God, what are we going to do? Then you have political figures that sow their seeds of liberalism and teach people all of this demonic rebellion and, and, and releasing of themselves from all of the morals that they have been taught in their life. And then because they cater to the flesh and they become popular and you know, the special interest groups like them, well then suddenly there they are and they're a, a, a very powerful force to be reckoned with in the, in the government. You say, God, how do we deal with this? How can we stop it? And considering the whole package of what a person that's filled with Jezebel, especially when they're totally given over to the Spirit, what they're capable of, it's just, it's so multifaceted, and, and, and the talents that they have, the skills that they have, you say, God, there has got to be a way, but how? This is, I feel, the answer to this. First and foremost, we must not just be against Jezebel. What we learn from Elijah's life is that he called down fire from heaven, he killed the prophets, he got the people back on their faces worshiping God, he ran faster than Ahab's chariot, he travailed so the rain would come, they ran so that they wouldn't get stopped in the mountains by the rain as it came, came uh, touching the dust and making a mudslide. But just being against Jezebel was not enough to destroy Jezebel, and that's why he was so overwhelmed. When he left that experienced time with God at Mount Horeb. God sent him home with this purpose. You go anoint Elisha. Take the anointing and transfer it. What Jezebel does so effectively is she learned how to indoctrinate a culture that supported her. What we're dealing with in the 21st century right now is not just the spirit of Jezebel. We are dealing with a culture of Jezebel. It's in the music. It's in the dolls. It's in the clothes. It's in the makeup. It's in the movies. It's everywhere you look. It's taught. It's trained. It's cultivated. I mean, we're seeing it in, on the lowest levels. I mean, babies that are being dressed up like whores. 
and you're saying, God, what is happening to us? This is something that we're celebrating now. It's a culture. And see, the culture accommodates it, and it's widespread. And then that culture just naturally comes into the church because whatever's in the church comes into the world. When you win souls, they bring their culture with them. And then you try to undo that culture, it is a very difficult task. And so the answer is, is that we must not just fight against the spirit or even fight against the culture and constantly be negative because this world does not need more and more and more and more and more negative. They already have enough negative in their life. What they need is an answer. They need an alternative. They need the real thing. What they need is their own contact with God. We have to remember that it got this way because of tradition. It got this way because of a moral void. It got this way because people had lost their contact with God and they had become lethargic so that Jezebel could ever sow her seeds of paganism and idolatry in the first place. So the answer to this is we must create our own culture of spiritual leaders, of men and women that are anointed with the double portion. We must empower this young generation to rise up, and we have got to multiply ourselves. What God said to Elijah is, it's not enough for one man, no matter how powerful he is, to stand against the culture. He must change the culture by imparting that anointing to somebody else. How we bring Jezebel down is that we go back to the agenda of God. As long as we are still trying to dismantle her culture and her agenda, we're still working on her turf and working on her plans. But when we do the work of God and we have identified what she is and we can categorize that, pray against that, and then create people that are the opposite of this. Every day I pray for my little girl, I pray that she would be the answer to this generation, that God would raise her up as a woman that would be the opposite of the culture, that she would be a, a Deborah, that she would be an Esther, that she would be a Sarah, that she would be a noble woman of God with wisdom and holiness and godliness. And when people would see her, they would say, now that's the wholesome kind of beauty that I want to that I want to have, that they would say, you don't have to 